My father died in 1983 when he was 68 and I was 32. I have many regrets about his death. An important one is that my son was born two years after my father died so that they never met. One of the reasons I tell stories about my father is because that's the only way my son has learned about him. But my chief regret about my father's death is that I had never established an adult relationship with him. Oh, I knew he loved me and he knew I loved him. That was never in question. And I have, I have documented proof of his love for me in the one picture that I found of him looking at me. There are many pictures of us both looking square in the camera. But there's one picture that I found that he is looking at me. I'm six months old. He's holding me like a sack of groceries. My back is up against him. And he is just beaming down love at me. It's my first Easter. And I'm wearing this tiny little dress that has little rosebuds on it. I always knew that my father loved me. But we didn't have a lot of interests in common. He liked sports and I liked crafts and playing the piano, things my mother did. So a number of years after his death, I was thinking about this and I knew I really couldn't change our relationship because he wasn't here. But I thought if I could count the ways I resembled him, I would feel better. So I went looking through our family photos again, and for the very first time, I realized that I have my father's smile. Both the shape of our uh, lips and teeth are identical. So that was, that was number one, the way I resembled him. And then, well, to think of my father at our home in Connecticut was to think of Pacassandra. My father loved propagating Pacassandra. Now, for those of you who did not grow up in a Pacassandra family, <laughs> and I realize there may be a number of you, um, Pacassandra is a ground cover. It grows maybe eight inches tall. It's evergreen, and it grows in the shade. So if you have maple trees, for instance, that are, the leaves are so thick that the sun can't get through and you can never grow grass under them, no matter how many times you plant it and water it, Pacassandra is what you should put there. And that's what, how my father got his first flat of Pacassandra. A friend of his gave him some and taught my father how to propagate it. Just where to cut off the shoots in the springtime and how to plant them in a sandy soil and when to, how often to water them. So by fall you, you had this flat full of Pacassandra ready to be transplanted. My father planted Pacassandra under the maple trees and then under all the shrubs and under the blue spruce and the, not under the dogwood. My mother wouldn't let him do that there. She wanted some place where she could put a lawn chair and sit out in the shade. But many places my father put Pacassandra. So it wasn't a surprise that when my husband and I bought our first house and my parents came for their first visit, my father arrived with a flat of Pacassandra and asked, where do you want me to put it? And I was very pleased to have some of his Pacassandra growing in my yard. Now, I have never propagated Pacassandra, but I have planted a lot of shrubs and flowers and bulbs around our house. So I'll count gardening as the second way I resembled him. And then I got on a real roll. Then I remembered that whenever my father got involved in an organization such as per the Purchasing Agents Association or Trout Unlimited, he always got involved. And I'm that way too. I was that way when my son was in school with a PTA and with storytelling organizations. So that was three. And then, oh, cards. Now, <laughs> that might have come first. I grew up playing all kinds of cards. I could play four-handed pinochle by the time I was eight years old, but I could play cribbage and gin and just regular rummy. So cards was four. And now my father occasionally played poker with cronies and would gamble. Uh, 
I have never done that, but my son likes to gamble. So that since this card and gambling went through me, I counted that as five ways I resembled my father. And that's as far as I could get. I couldn't get any farther than five. And five just didn't seem to be enough to satisfy me. But then something happened that Christmas Eve, the 17th Christmas Eve without my father. Dinner was, oh, Christmas Eve dinner was over and all the holiday chores were done. The presents were wrapped and under the tree, nothing else needed to be cleaned or everything was done and I still had some energy so that when my son and husband challenged my sister-in-law and me to play ping pong, I said, sure. Now, we hadn't had a ping pong table very long, uh, so I hadn't played doubles on this ping pong table before. We had had a ping pong table when I was growing up, but I hadn't played doubles in I don't know how long. But I heard myself saying, good shot, partner, or sorry, partner, I, I'll try not to do that again. Partner, partner, partner. This partner talk kept on coming out of my mouth, and I kept on thinking, where is this coming from? I didn't play partner tennis, or I couldn't figure it out. But that night, when I was getting ready for bed, it hit me. That was my father's card table talk. Whenever he was playing four-handed pinochle with the next door neighbor or my grandfather or my brother, it was always boys against the girls, he was always going, good hand partner or we'll win those points back partner. And suddenly, that was six. That was the sixth way I resembled my father. I realized that I resemble my father in ways I may or may not be able to recognize. And I look forward to future revelations. But now I know deep in my heart, I am my father's daughter. Wonderful.